Okay, so this video is going to be all about how we get multiple animation clips out of Blender. Uh, and the reason I need that is so that when I've gone to using something like this, GLTF Viewer, because this is basically a um, uh, for AR, so a character for AR, which has multiple animations. And basically within here we have uh, a shape key layer and we have an animation layer, um, allowing us to basically merge the two to give yourself a talking head. Animation looks a bit weird at the moment, not sure why, but come back to that later. Um, but it allows us to kind of combine things like here's the idle layer, and here's the idle layer with somebody talking, uh, or here's a kind of um, a mixture anyway. So we then end up with all the layers that we can do. So we have one character. Admittedly, this file's a little bit bigger than I like. Right now it's 50 odd meg because of all the blend shapes uh, or shape keys. Uh, I can get that down to kind of about 15 if I manage to um, strip out all the shape keys, but I want for now all this animation. So to do this, what you need to do is within here, uh, I've built out um, uh, a number of tracks. So I have like my Vizim uh, track for the character, um, and they're all kind of separate. So there's one story, here's another story, which is history, here's the outro, and so on. So I want to export those as separate. So to do that, I'm going to go to um, export as FPX. Uh, I'm going to stick with 60, but I'm going to experiment with 30 frames as well, because I want to see if I can reduce again the file size by a lower... Um, count but at the moment I haven't quite got that working so 60 is the default for Blender. Make sure embedded textures are turned off. Pick your range. So here I'm going for the range where the audio is that I want to capture. So this would give me uh, one export which has got, basically got this Vizim recorded in it and any additional animation I've got around head and movement and so on, so on within there. That's basically it. So export that. Uh, export any of the motion layers. So if in here you have some additional motion like I had an idle track, uh, I can export that. Um, and also, uh, if you want to get the audio out, uh, export audio, uh, video, WAV, uh, range of wherever it is you need, and then export. Done. So that gives you, um, basically within here, that gives you a load of SP FBX files. Uh, it would also give you a WAV file as well. You can't see that here, but that would give me a WAV file. Uh, and the textures and so on are within here. So now we need to know how we take this, combine it in Blender, uh, to do everything we need. So let's get rid of the cube because I don't want to use cube. Uh, I, in this case, am using Blender 312. Um, and basically I have got an additional plugin. So I push N on the keyboard. So N brings up these kind of option menus. And then here I've got this pipeline and this is a CC uh, plugin. Um, which you can add in the add-ins. Uh, also look at one of my other videos on how to do that. I won't go into detail this time, uh, but there's a uh, video I've got there, which I'll try and link in the description, uh, which explains how I did this and imported that. So from here, no physics, no light. Let's import a character. Let's go to my character. Now, the important thing in here, if I imported the idle track, I'd be missing the Vizim's shape keys, which means when I bring in all the rest of them, it doesn't know what to do with it. So it's important that you bring in one of the initial, or your first one you load includes the Vizim's uh, shape keys. So this has got audio in it. Okay, so I'll bring in the intro. I'll show you what I mean by that when that comes in. So let's go to here. If I click on my character, I want to up the resolution, uh, sorry, upscale for my workflow. So let's put him in like this. Uh, let's spin around a little bit, middle mouse button on my keyboard, or my mouse rather. Okay, there we go. So we've got character, change that to shading. Uh, I'm going to go through to basic setup and I'm going to rebuild as basic material. That gives me what I need for AR. And then just to walk you through the hierarchy. So within here, we've got a character, which has got an animation in here. This is the physical movement tracks. So this is the motion layer. So within here, it'd be anything that's captured in this motion layer uh, is under this. Uh, and you can see some keyframes here. Uh, in fact, if I expand this down, you can see that uh, everything in here is to do with physical motion. Uh, there's no shape keys in here. This is all just how the character moves. Um, then within uh, the actor scan, uh, we have an actor scan, we have keys, we have animation, and this is the shape key layer. So this is where you will find the Vizim value. So the Vizim shape keys are the V ones. Uh, so we here, see here we've got these are the Vizim layers and then we've got the other kind of uh, morphs uh, within uh, Character Creator. Um, and basically those two combined give you a bit of a talking animation like this, where there's a little bit of movement. Um, nothing too major because we're going to bring in the idle, which bring in the rest of the movement. And that's your character. 
So let's up this to uh, the number I exported, which is around about uh, just over a thousand. Uh, if, as part of this work, I was to play around with the FPS, you can see under output properties we've got the FPS currently set to 30 because this one was exported to 30. But I suspect your one, if you're following my process, will be exported to 60. Um, but I'm just playing around with those, so forgive it, might be a little bit odd while I'm working that out. And the critical bit here is, okay, so how do we bring in the additional layers? How do we create the clips that we can then use uh, when we get to here to appear as a separate rows? Because right now we're only going to have two. We're going to have the two that you can see here, which is this one and this one. Um, the, uh, and we need to basically break those down into multiple clips. So to do that, what we need to do is bring in the other animations. So I'm going to bring in the animations. So let's bring in, we've already brought in the intro, so let's bring in idle. Uh, you'll see that appear as a new row here. Uh, let's also bring in a couple of the others just so you can see how this works. So bring in history, import animation, and let's bring in the outro. Okay, so you might notice these are changing down the bottom here. So again, these are the um, each of these has its own um, animation track. Uh, and I'm not sure actually, I've not found the Vizim track in here, but it is interesting. It's there somewhere. It's just not obvious at all. Um, but I'll show you how that works. So if I go to John, what I need to do now is if you hover over the corner here, you get a little plus or a little cross. And if I move that up, if you get that, let's just move out the way. I don't want that. Um, but what I should be able to do is, no, still not again. Let's do it from this side. I'm trying to get up is another row <laughs> and now I've lost it. Did this last time and it's really annoying because I don't know how, there we go. Right now I've brought up a second one and ideally I want another one. Okay, well, basically bringing up additional layers and then within here I can go to change it. So I can go to the dope sheet, for example, and I can change the dope sheet to either action editor and action editor is editing these animations or the shape key editor, uh, which is editing these. So these are the spoken elements of the um, shape keys. And you can see how these are all used. Now in theory, to keep the size of the file down, I'm, I think what I'm gonna do is go in and remove some of these shape keys, because you can see there's a lot of extra ones there. But it's a balance between uh, visually looking pleasing and moving versus um, uh, size of file. So let's see what we can do there. And there might be some of those where you can see they've got some odd things like that, uh, where the raised, I'm not actually sure what it is. One of these is obviously way above what it should be. Here we go, like a blink. Um, I can pull these down a bit just to try and correct any obvious errors in the way that's working. But you want to know now how to pull these into clips. So to do that, let's start at this level. So to begin with, I want to do all the actions. So the actions here, so in the middle here, we have all the actions that are imported and these are accessible because of all the ones we pulled in. So I'm going to start by calling these all the different things they need to be. So let's call that one the action. When I've added it in, I'm going to click on stash and you'll see stash will then turn this into a layer, an NL, uh, NL track. And there we go, we've got action. Uh, I'm going to do the same walking down um, these. Uh, why have I ended up with that way around? That doesn't look right. Okay, interesting. Oh, there it is. There's the action. Sorry, yeah, my mistake. Didn't see action there. So let's do the other two. So go outro, click on that and call that action. And you see as I'm editing it appears here and then I'm going to stash it as a track and you can see it appears here. Let's work through the others. Action, stash, new track. And we've got one left, which is this top one here, the history. History, action, and stash that. Great. So we now have four tracks for animation, which are all around the movement. And I can go in and, and um, mess around with if I need to. Um, but in essence, they're the four different tracks. Um, now what we need to do is go to the uh, shape keys. So to do that, I'm going to switch to the, the scan. I'm going to change that to the uh, shape key editor. And I'm going to do the same here. But you can see we've this time we've got um, uh, actor scan ones. So I'm going to go for it and call this one the key. Stash it. And you can see we've now got an LLA track, uh, outro, key, stash it, idle, key, 
stash it. And the reason I'm renaming these is they're a lot easier when it comes to actually programming uh, in something like A-Frame. Uh, where you need to know uh, the name of the animation uh, you want. Uh, also, it allows me to, within um, A-Frame, to have um, wildcards. So if I do John-Intro star, so for example in here, this is the A-Frame Anno John-Intro star, will play both the um, animation and the um, uh, the shape key animation. So you get them both basically with one because this doesn't allow you to put in multiple animations, but you can wildcard it with a star. So that's great. So we've now got all of our animations in here and we've got all the rest at the top. What we can next basically do is export this. Uh, so if we go file export as a GLTF, um, we're going to stick that back in the folder. I've already got this one here. Uh, important to ensure your shape key animations are exported. So we can export that. It will take a few seconds to do. Um, we can see here, because we've done it already, this file will update um, and that will give us the new file we can use. And then basically we can preview that in here. So using um, uh, his viewer, Don McCurdy, um, we can then preview the different keys and make sure that they're coming out as they should. And ultimately that allows us to bring that into A-Frame uh, and basically generate some additional um, animation uh, as I need it. That is it. It's a long process. Um, you have got a lot of flexibility when it comes to editing them. I think you can actually now have done that. I think I can delete these. Um, they don't seem to save a huge amount, but I will test that as well later. Uh, and that's basically it. That is the process. Okay, just to wrap up the last video, so what I found is that I end up with too many duplicates, which could get rather confusing when it comes to actually managing the, um, the uh, A-frame kind of side of things. So in order to do that, what you can do is, uh, as long as you've got your master, um, which is where all the stashes are under, um, I can now go in and I can remove all the other ones which are imported. They're no longer needed because we've still got all the animation data within here. Um, which is stashed against it. Uh, and then the other bit I want to do is with this character where we've got here, if I change that to the action builder, I don't actually want this leftover one here because it's already stashed. So I'm just going to click on X, which deletes that. So we end up with a nice clean export now, which has got the individual animation tracks um, and the uh, actical um, shape keys or um, morph targets, however you want to do it, or blend shapes different names for lots of the same thing. So this ends up with a nice clean export now. So if I was to export this as uh, so the GLB, I overwrite this one. We give that a few seconds just to update. Um, it does take a little while. Um, just keeping on the time here. And uh, that should update in a second. Once it's updated, I can just show you how that looks. Um, there we go, that's changed. So if I go back to here, refresh this one. Um, drag in our blend uh, and we basically now have a nice clean um, you can't quite see it but they are all um, paired up so we have history and history key and so there's a the talking uh, we have idle action there's no idle key relevant it's just literally a teeny weeny bit of blinking maybe um, and then we've got like uh, um, keys for here and you can obviously mix these up. So we could have idle action uh, with um, oh, with an intro key. So we've kind of got them talking. And if we can put in the other one as well, we can do that. I know this looks a little odd. Should hopefully look okay by the time it's pulled through to the other thing. Or maybe I've overdone some of these blend shape keys and we might need to uh, tweak those a little. But this gives you now complete flexibility about what you want to turn on and off um, whilst keeping a single file. Um, which can be done. And this obviously works with loads of different things. It doesn't have to just be an actor core character. You can use this exact process with any animation uh, to trigger multiple keys whilst keeping the file relatively small. This is a bit big for AR, to be honest, but rather it was half that size um, to reduce that. Uh, as I said before, you can go in and start stripping out some of the um, blend shapes, which we can do under one of these, I think. Yeah, there we go. So if there's too many of here, um, you will simplify, it's best to simplify this. Um, look at what really adds to your animation. Um, look at what's really important. Um, basically, strip out the rest. That's all I can recommend. So let's look at maybe one of these. Yeah, so you can see there's lots of different uh, actions and movements here. A lot of that isn't needed, but the more realistic you want to keep the face movement, the more you may have to keep some of those. 
that I think is it. Uh, and I may show you the final results once I've finished.